Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com under the topic of waves and sound with the title, Name That Harmonic Strings. There are actually three Name That Harmonics in a row here. We're going to do strings, then we're going to do open-ended air columns and closed-ended air columns. So let's start away with um, harmonics. What are harmonics? So um, as a wave travels through a medium, in this case, it's a string because we're doing heart, name that harmonic strings, but it could be the a tube of air in like a uh, clarinet or a trumpet or something like that, um, or just like a wind chime. Um, but as the, a wave travels through a medium, it will bounce back when it reaches a boundary, like the end of a string or the end of an air column. We'll talk about the air columns next time. Certain frequencies interact in a way that constructive interference will always happen in the same place. We call this spot an antinode. A jump rope is a great example that the center of it, the waves are technically traveling back and forth, and we get an antinode in the center. Same thing happens with a guitar string or piano string, etc. Violin string. Other spots, other spots, or perhaps one other spot, will uh, always have destructive interference. In other words, as the waves bounce back and forth, there'll be a spot that doesn't move. Like if you spin a jump rope twice as fast, and you get that, that spot in the middle where the rope isn't moving, but you have these two little anti-nodes spinning around. You have two different people jumping in them. So this only happens, getting anti-nodes and nodes, only happens with certain frequencies. These frequencies are called harmonics. So our lowest a harmonic would be this. This looks just like a jump rope. This is the main frequency you hear when you do something like pluck a guitar string. Yes, I have a guitar here, fun, fun. So when I pluck that guitar string, the main note I'm hearing is this frequency. You'll notice in a guitar string, we have uh, this side tied down and this side tied down, which is why we always have nodes at the end, places where destructive interference happens. In other words, it doesn't move. We're forcing that by holding them down. And then the main thing is just the string vibrating back and forth, which is the longest wavelength and therefore the smallest or lowest frequency. However, at the same time as I pl uh, pluck my guitar, I will get other frequencies vibrating as well, such as the second harmonic, where the strings go back and forth like this. Okay, this is the jump rope situation I'm talking about, where you get this node in the center where the string isn't actually moving at all. Okay, on both sides, it's vibrating up and down. It'll do this, we'll have the third harmonic where there's uh, two nodes and three anti nodes, etc all the way down. And instruments sound different because they have different amounts of each of these harmonics. So the big question is here is how can we count the number of harmonics? That's going to be our first level, the apprentice level. Okay, so let's go, let's just take a look real quick here. We see um, the first harmonic has one anti-node, the second harmonic has two anti-nodes, and that's going to lead us to our answer here. So in this case, if we want to figure out what um, you're, you're actually going to be told, it's the third harmonic, and then you have to figure out which pattern matches it. So let's figure out what harmonic this is, and you'll be able to uh, do the apprentice level. So we just count the antinodes. Here's one antinode. It goes up and down here. Two antinodes, three antinodes, four antinodes, five antinodes, six antinodes, seven antinodes, eight antinodes, nine antinodes, ten antinodes. That means this is the tenth harmonic. Okay, so if the question asks you what's the tenth harmonic, you'd choose this picture. If it says the third harmonic, you'd look for one that has just three antinodes. There you go. Apprentice level accomplished. The next level has you uh, learn about the frequencies of those harmonics. How fast is the string going back and forth for comparing the different harmonics to each other? We have an equation for that. Okay, um, The uh, frequency of our first harmonic, the base uh, frequency of the string, is 
uh, frequency one. If we multiply that times the number of the harmonic you're looking for, for example, if we're looking for the second harmonic, we'd multiply the base harmonic, the first harmonic, uh, times the times two for the second harmonic, and then we'd get F sub two, which is the frequency of the second harmonic. Let's see what that looks like in practice. So here's the question. Whoops, extra one, there we go, pen. The fundamental or first harmonic frequency of vibrating spring is 180. That's the first, okay? The same string is capable of vibrating with several other standing wave patterns. That's what we talked about. Identifying, identify the standing wave pattern with a harmonic that has a frequency of 720 hertz. So we think back to our equation here, F sub N equals N times F sub one. In this case, we have been given our first harmonic, here it is, our first frequency of our first harmonic, and our nth harmonic right here. So if we take this and we just rearrange for N, that means dividing both sides by the first frequency of the first harmonic. It's gonna cancel out the frequency of the first harmonic and we get N equals the frequency of the nth harmonic divided by the frequency of the first harmonic, which for this problem is 720 hertz is the nth harmonic. And uh, F1 was 180 hertz. Okay, and so uh, to get that, we just do 720 divided by 180, which would be four. So this is the fourth harmonic. So what do we look for? We look for something that has four antinodes, okay? And it has the bottoms written in a slightly different color. I think they're like a lighter shade of red, but you get the idea there. So that has one, two, three, four. And so that's the one you would choose in this case. Okay. And that's how you figure out the frequency. Use the nice formula up here. Rearrange for N. So you can just use this formula. Plug in the nth frequency, the frequency of the first harmonic. That'll give you the harmonic number. And then you just find the picture that has that many uh, anti-nodes. All right, moving along to the wizard level. That involves the wavelength of the harmonic. Okay, so um, here we have a formula that's designed to give us the um, wavelength of the uh, string, given a length of string and the number of the harmonic that you have. So if you had a harmonic that was like this, okay, that has one, two, three anti-nodes, okay, then the length of this, which is this length, divided by n, which is the number of harmonics, which is also the number of antinodes. So one, two, three. So we take the total length, divide by three, that gives us the length of one antinode. And then we multiply it by two because it takes two antinodes to get one wavelength. Okay, so that's where this equation comes from. Let's take a look at how we use it in practice. Okay, so. First of all, I'm going to do this just without the equation at all, just by picturing it. Okay, so we start out, we see a string has a length of 100 centimeters. Okay, so we know the total length of the string is 100 centimeters. Identify the standing wave pattern for the harmonic that has a wavelength of 40 centimeters. So a wavelength of 40 centimeters means that is 40 centimeters. That's uh, the wave until it repeats itself. 40 centimeters. Well, if we just put one more wave in, we know that's another 40 centimeters. 
That's 80 total. Well, we have to get to 100. That means we've got 20 left. Well, 20 is half of 40. So we'll just put half the wave in. So we know it's going to look something like this. Okay. If we want to use our formula, wavelength equals 2 times L over N. We're solving for N. N is the number, the, the, the harmonic number. So first thing we would need to do is get N into the numerator. So we get n up into the numerator by multiplying both sides by n. Then we divide, then we have n times the wavelength equals 2 times the length. And if we're trying to solve for n, we would divide both sides by the wavelength. And so we get n equals 2l over lambda. So n equals 2 times 100 centimeters divided by uh, the wavelength, which is 40 centimeters. So we have 200 divided by 40, which is 5, which is exactly what we drew here. There's wavelength number 1, or anti-node number 1, anti-node number 2, 3, 4, and not 4 again, 5. All right, and so this string will vibrate back and forth like this if this is the harmonic that we, if a harmonic with this wavelength. All right, I hope you enjoy puzzling these out as you look at the standing waves on a guitar string. Um, and we will uh, put, uh, click that like and subscribe button, please. And uh, please leave any questions you have in the comments below. And I'll get back to you, and uh, we'll see you next time on the scientific adventures of Beard Man.